Hello, I'm normally working on audio and video equipment and I have some video equipment cluttering up my uh, workshop. But uh, in the meantime, with a bit of a lack of space, this has failed. It's a digital photo frame and it started just crashing and doing weird things and then not working at all. So I thought most likely the power supply. It's got a 5 volt power supply. Uh, so we just hook that up. Of course, this is offload and it's working just fine. Yeah. So it may not be working so well when it's on load. Uh, I could try to lash something up to connect this via a means of measuring the voltage. Uh, but I think what I'll do is instead I'll take the back off if I can and have a look at the voltages in here. Uh, so the effect we're getting is, well now it's totally dead. What it was doing was uh, sort of coming up with a boot screen and going no further. Uh, but now it's just not doing anything. So it does feel a bit like power supply, doesn't it? But I'm a bit short of space here. Let's take this foot off. So uh, it's a Pixstar photo frame. We did have Philips ones before, but they kept dying. They had a lovely picture on the Philips ones though. Right, I'm assuming yes, there's screws behind these rubber bungs. I may yet have to make some space on the workbench and remove these video recorders, but I'm trying not to. Right, let's see how it comes apart, indeed, if it comes apart. Actually comes apart a bit like a TV. Uh, so can we get any further in? Yes. Oh, it's um got stereo speakers. I wasn't expecting that. Right. So the power supply is plugged in, and the switch is in the on position. Can I get to anything that's definitely five volts in here? I think the on-off switch is here. So I should pick up the 5 volts on there, uh, so I just need to work out what's ground. As this has got, this goes around one of the screw holes, I think that's ground. So let's see if we can pick up 5 volts from any of these points here when I switch it on. You can hear a very quiet click when I switch it on. I really am getting no voltage at all. Let me um, power cycle it and see if I get a blip on the multimeter. Right, let it switch off a moment. Because I just heard that click. And you see a small voltage on there, very small. Oh. Fractions of a millivolt. So I really do believe it's the power supply that's at fault. Good, right. Well, that's the easiest thing to fix, potentially. So I need a 5 volt center positive uh, supply. I think it's quite high current as well. Yeah, 2.5 amps. That's quite quite a significant power supply. So uh, let's see what I can find. I mean, OK, I could take this apart, uh, but it won't be the easiest thing to get apart and it'd be probably impossible to fix. Shall we have a little look in a power supply? Let's just see if I can get it apart. It's coming apart a little bit easier than some do. <clears throat> I have a remote control foot switch for this uh, ESR meter. Let's see if uh, we can briefly have a look at some of these capacitors. 
So this is going to be the primary one, 400 volt, 10 microfarad, and there's another one there, 400 volt. And I can't see how many microfarads, but it might be 15. So those two, uh, they're probably going to be parallel to each other. I think they are actually. So we should see 20 something microfarads. And we do. So that's those two almost eliminated. We've got another one here which is high voltage as well, 2.2 microfarads. Uh, reading higher than that, so it's obviously got another path. So it's reading high ESR, but it's probably not genuine. Let's look at the uh, output side capacitors then over here. So that's 10 volt 1000, and I don't know what that one is, the smaller one but it's probably going to appear more or less in parallel. There might be an inductor or something between them. So let's have a look at the 10 volt 1000. It can't measure it because it's in circuit. Just to across there, which is a 1200, so 1.2K. Uh, I don't think that would upset the measurement too much. I'll do that measurement one more time. No, it's not going to measure that. So, uh, and that is, to me, the most likely culprit, that one there, even though it doesn't look like it's exploded. But uh, I would say it's most likely that one. So if I take that one out, let's see what we can see. I could use just a soldering iron or desolder pump or desolder braid. And I think for this one, I'm going to use a little desolder braid. And I'll add a bit of new solder before I start. I've managed to isolate the capacitor, even though I've not managed to get off the board yet. So let's just see if I can measure the capacitance on it now. 1,100 microfarads, it says. Uh, that seems to be in spec. Low ESR. Well, I never. Let's have a look at the other one, if I can get, if I can isolate the other one. You can't measure that one, but no. So to my surprise, it's not capacitor failure. Maybe what I should do is temporarily desolder these, or at least one of those, and connect it to my lab power supply. Yes, that's an idea, isn't it? Power it from the lab power supply instead. It'd be nice if the polarity was marked on the board. It might be, but it's under all this gunge. Yes, so the wire I've disconnected is the negative one, and the positive one is still on the board. So, if I were to do that, set this to 5 volts at high current. Right, I've set that to about 5 volts, with it up to 2 amps. So now, I should be able to connect it to the photo frame. I'm just doing a double check of my polarity. The disconnected one is definitely negative. Switch this to off, plug it in, switch it to on, and check the power supply. So it's, read, it's pulling 200 milliamps. And still nothing. Off, on, press the menu button, absolutely nothing. I can hear a faint pop from the speakers. I don't know why I wasn't measuring the 5 volts on this board then, earlier because it looks likely it was getting through. We can prove that now, can't we? Because we know we've got 5 volts. Back to the multimeter. Oh, there you go, 5 volts. We didn't see that before. So, um, even though we do have 5 volts on the board, 4.8, I don't know what's slightly lower than from the power supply, maybe a 
inductor or something going on in here. Let's see if we can pick up any voltages anywhere else. 3.3 volts there. We've got 5 volts there and another sort of position for what looks like a switch. I've got 5 volts there and another position which may be some sort of test port. Um, but no, I'm not getting any life out of this machine at all. It looks like the original manufacturer here is Lantec. So there's various voltages, including 3.3 volts, variously throughout the board, but no activity. So uh, I think the actual problem is that the machine has died. I uh, don't think we're going to be able to fix that, but it was worth trying. Okay, well it's reassembled, but I don't even know why, uh, because I can't get this to go again. If anybody out there has got any information on this, uh, let me know. Or if someone, for example, has one with a broken screen that otherwise works, perhaps we can make one out of two. Right, I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future, hopefully with a bit more success than this. Bye for now. And here's what we've replaced it with. It's Pixie. We bought this one from Argus. It doesn't have a remote control, but it is a touch screen, which can make it a bit easier to set up. And a lovely thing about this one is you can send photos to it directly from your phone from anywhere. So here are some photos that we uh, took in the last few days, and we can put them straight onto the photo frame, which is quite nice.